Well, good to see you this, uh, this evening in the Lord's house. Glad to have you with us. Glad to have our visitors tonight. If you're with us for the first time, we sure just thank you for coming, being with us. And looking forward to having a good Wednesday night service. Amen. And as we do that, we, we'll take a prayer request in a few minutes, but let me mention a couple. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Marvin uh, Petit. He is seemingly not doing any better, so pray for him if you would. And pray for Miss Darlene. She's having a hard time with Marvin being there and, and with their business and trying to get the driver to help them out while he's not able to drive. So we heard one thing and another, so pray for them. Uh, the, uh, the hospital has requested that he not have any visitor, visitors except for the immediate family uh, for the time being because uh, they've tried to keep him settled so the ribs will heal. And uh, so they're now just only uh, wanting the family to visit. And she said she'd let us know as soon as it was open up others could come. But they're thinking about putting him down, moving him down to restorative care. So uh, pray about that also. And then uh, pray for... Brother Rufus Stewart, the one that just told me they're going to do surgery on him uh, this coming Friday. They're going to install a rod in his leg, up in his hip area. Um, they pray he's going to fall and break a leg or break a hip or something. So they're going to do that on Friday for Brother Rufus. So keep him in your prayers. And then continue to pray for Rick Melton and uh, other people. I know Nancy's uh, injured. She's sick tonight. That's the reason Ms. Norton is not here. And let's pray for the sister Peggy and uh, brother uh, Kenny. I think they were sick Sunday, and, and evidently Humpy and Miss Darts was sick. So let's pray for them. And then, of course, continue to pray for Brother Bill Perkins. He's uh, in good spirits and seemingly doing well, but still just not mobile enough to get up, and move around, and walk. But he did say it's pretty Sunday. They may they may come to church Sunday for the preaching service. So uh, let's pray they'll get to be here. Can they be good to see them? in the Lord's house, and they're looking for a house back up here in the Roebuck area, so if you know of something that comes available in, in this area, let us know, and we'll let them know, it might be something that they, they might pursue, and come back here to God's country, amen? amen. <laughs> but anyway, you pray for it. Let's stand if you would, and we'll go to the Lord's word of prayer, well, that's the Lord's blessings upon the request we've already mentioned, and then also uh, for the service, and pray that the Lord's will be done tonight. He'll be pleased in all that we say and all that we do. Give him the glory and praise and honor. We love him and we thank him and praise him for all his goodness. Uh, brother Gary, kindly, would you pray for us, please, brother? Yes. Yes. God grant it. Yes. Lord, touch him, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray to you. Bless our package now, Lord. That was for us. Give you the word to say to us, Lord. Pray, Lord. We give you other honors. Go and praise you, Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Saving our souls. Yes. Give us all that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Make a standing, please. All right. If you'll turn in your hymnals to hymn number 376, if you need it. Nothing but the blood. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse. <laughs>
We were going to have Sister Dazzy, but she's sick this evening, so we... Yeah, it doesn't like being second fiddle. <laughs>
They probably said, they're, 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 there's a lot of different things that we got saved from. What I'm trying to show to you tonight is this. Our God is not limited. Amen. He is all, he's not so power. He's all powerful. And he can forgive every sinner of every sin that they've ever committed. Amen. If they'll come into him. And folks, that is a miracle. Amen. And the greatest of all miracles <laughs> was when he saved me. Amen. I thank you for it.
and um, they're still saying that her problem is from her immune system, that she's having problems with that, they put her on an autoimmune um, suppressant drug because they say that her immune system is fighting her body and, um, and they're going to have to monitor her and check her blood every week to make sure that she's not picking up any um, infections. So y'all just, y'all pray for the health of this drug this year. Okay. It's just been dead of infections. I mean, I don't know if any of you know, but, you know, that's what took our son from us. It wasn't the cancer. It was an infection that he um, developed. So I just pray for her while she's on this drug because it's going to be very vulnerable. Okay, all right. Pray for my papa. Okay. Karen? If y'all would just remember the Faulkner family and your friends, okay. and also the lady I had asked for prayer for Wednesday night, she passed away, but I was telling, I got to witness this, this lady on Facebook, and I was telling her, even though she didn't heal the girl, that she was healed now because she was a Christian woman, so. Okay, all right. Pray for my family. Okay. All right. Anybody else on this side? This is Marie. Pray for me and my family and pray for the country. Okay. Sure will, Miss Marie. Okay, Mason. Pray for me to be good in school and if everything was one dollar, I'd pay to go to heaven. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Teresa? Thanks for finding that and brother. Oh, okay. Okay, Teresa. Oh, Teresa, I just want to praise God. Um, Mama has had a spot on her lung for over a year. Had been told it could potentially be cancer. They went down last Wednesday, scraped it, cleaned it, biopsied it, and it come back as a fungal infection. Amen. Okay. Praise God. And please pray for the Smith family. Our friend Luther lost his mother. All right. Anyone else on that side? Okay. Anyone in this section? Who? Oh, Miss Sam. I didn't yeah. say her. Uh, remember that. Okay. All right. Uh, Sandy. Remember, there's a young man that works with me, and his mom has cancer, and I think she's like 45. Um, her name is Christy Fury, and um, we went and visited her. And, um, but anyway, just pray for her and the family. Okay. Uh, Rachel? Um, my coworker and I um, need to ask my church to pray for her husband to get a job that he's working second shift, but she works first shift. They never get to see each other. They don't have any kids, so he's the only person that she has. She really, she really wants some prayer. So please pray for her. Yeah. All right. Her husband needs another job that because he's sick. Okay. All right. Anyone else back through there? <clears throat> okay. This section. Anybody? Uh, Edward. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I have a, a pastor friend of mine that um, he's. Uh, He's going to go have he's going to have serious cancer surgery on the 30th of January. They told him that it's very serious. Uh, he, it started out with skin cancer on his head, and it's just grew. And so he's having a very serious surgery on the 30th of January. So pray for his family and his church. God knows who it is. Okay, Brother Robert. Yeah, pray for me. Uh, one of our middle schools has started a man of promise group. And I uh, had one of the teachers who heads the group up ask me last Friday if I would come in March and uh, last a half hour during their lunch period, asked me if I'd come and speak to them. He said, you can speak about salvation, anything you want to, so praise God. There's an open in public school to preach the gospel. Just, just pray, Lord, give me the words to say. Amen. Okay. Um, Anyone else in this section? Over here? Anyone? Uh, that's it. Um, I have a burden on my heart. It's a family situation. The Lord knows the balance. But it seems like things just keep occurring. But I know that the Lord's still working on me. <laughs> Even though I'm dead to death, I've still got a lot to learn. And I know that He's teaching me something for some reason. And 
I ask that God answer the prayer that's on my heart for the situation that they're in. Okay. Ms. Norman? Uh, remember my sister, Ruth and David. And when you pray for Norman, pray for Darlene. She's on the foot and streets right now. Remember her. Okay. Anybody else on this side? Donnie? Uh, remember my family. I have some family that's not right with the Lord. And I have a friend whose name is George, and he has liver cancer. That's Clay Cross's brother. Okay. Anyone else? Wanda? Uh, yes, pray for Sam Hammond. He's a gentleman um, at the lake that's at the campground, and he has cancer. And also uh, Woody and Jeannie Presley. Um, Woody has cancer. He's the, the, the husband, and his wife has dementia. So they're, it's, it's not good. So, but just please pray for the, both their families. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else? Uh, pray for Todd. He's got a doctor's appointment for his husband. And also, I got a knee replacement in February. Okay. All right. Ms. Dars? I thank the Lord that I'm here and for my strength and helping me to feel better. And I got an unspoken prayer request I need y'all to help me pray about. And I'm I know God's going to work things out according to His will. Amen. He can do it. I'll go for Dodge. I'll be today's Okay. Also, uh, Brother Roy told me a while ago that uh, they have diagnosed Sister Patty with cervical, cervical cancer. So pray for Sister Patty. And she'll be having surgery sometime in the future. So uh, just pray that everything will go well. And to have surgery, all the cancer will be removed. I pray better than that. Pray that when they go back and look again, it won't even be there. You say you believe that, Captain Preacher? Absolutely, I do. We have, we serve a great God. Let's have the ushers to come receive the offering this evening, and you give is given unto the Lord, and I know the Lord will bless you in your faithfulness and giving to the work of the Lord, and we'll ask the Lord to bless the offering, the service, and also all the requests tonight. So we'll just meet every day. Brother Dennis, if you would, would you pray for us? Appreciate having a follow up. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank this time you're going to come to your house. Yes. Praise you and worship yes. you and, 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 and be diligent to what you have us to do, dear God. Yes. You've heard all this request tonight, dear God, that uh, you can touch it, touch it and every one of them, dear God, just to make them well, make them feel better, just to ease the pain from the, from the heart and from, yes. from the body, dear God. <clears throat> just thank you so much for giving for your love that you have for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To us. And this time, dear God, we're about to receive these tithes and offerings, dear God, to bless the gift and the giver, and not to grow as one penny that gives to us. Yes. To the Amen. Lord. Just thank you so much again for your love that you have for us. And your son, told the precious thing. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother. Oh, get the jug off from children. <laughs>
blood. There's power in the blood. Hey, you got it. No cracking in the microphone tonight. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> so you might be able to like it. All right. So good to be here tonight. Good to be able to come to church on Wednesday night. We're going to pick up where we were last Wednesday night. I'm going to read a few verses from the book of Genesis, chapter 22. And... Um, I'm not going to read that whole portion that we read last week, but I would like to read the portion that is uh, talking about the altar. Don't forget uh, to sign up for the meal next Wednesday night and make these announcements while I get my, how many hoods? 17. 17. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, don't forget the uh, trip to Greenville, Tennessee. I think we have about 35 that's lined up to go, somewhere in that number, and uh, you need to give Sandy your money so we can get that taken care of, and of course that'll be uh, February the 14th and the 15th, and we'll be leaving the church here on Friday uh, around 2, 2.30, so those of you that are planning on going, be ready to be prepared for that. But let me just say, uh, they did say this, take you some bedroom slippers, bedroom shoes, so they say those are concrete floors. And they are cold. So you have to have something a little snuggy on your feet, okay? So your feet won't get cold. <laughs> and listen, now don't pack like you're going to spend a week. It's just overnight, okay? Make sure we can get everybody's one overnight stay in. Don't you bring four or five luggage bags, okay? Because you're not going to need not going to be there that long. But anyway, <clears throat> we're looking forward to going. And looking forward to having the good fellowship that we're going to have with the people. And uh, just excited and hope and pray that we'll just have a great time and a wonderful time. And uh, we'll enjoy some good things with the Lord's people. <clears throat> In the book of Genesis chapter 22, I'm going to read verses 1. Uh, I'm not sorry, number 1. Verse number 5 uh, down through about verse number 12 uh, tonight. You remember last Wednesday night, those of you that were here... Uh, we were talking about the altar. And thank God for the altar that we have here in church, but there are other places you can have an altar. And anywhere, I believe anywhere you can do business with God it can be an altar. Amen. It can be a five-gallon bucket. Amen. It can be a, a chair. Like I said, it can be a steering wheel. It can be anything that you want to make an altar. But I think we'll see the importance of what we said last Wednesday night. And bringing you up to date on that and going into the night, what the Lord's laid upon our heart. Let's read verse number five. The Bible says that Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and claimed the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young man, uh, young men, abide ye here while the ass and I with the ass and I and the son will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took not the fire, took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they both went of them together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord came unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, Here am I. And he said, I lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything to, unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that he hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, 
from me. We'll stop reading right there and we'll ask the Lord's blessing upon the word. Thank you, our Father, for what we've already heard tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies and the prayer requests that were mentioned and made known. Father, you know the need, and I pray that you'll answer every need according to your precious will. Pray you'll bless in the service tonight, bless the touch hearts of those that are in this building. God, I pray tonight that there'll be not one person who walk out this building, Father, uh, without being ready to meet the Lord. God, work, I pray, and move as only you can. And for all that you do tonight, we'll bow our heads and thank you, and we'll praise you, and we'll love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just to bring you up to date, we talked about, last Wednesday night, we talked about the altars and the type of altar that they are. We mentioned that an altar is not merely a place, a raised structure and a place of, of planks and of wood, but it can be also used as a, uh, a, a, as a bird form to show change or to become different. And then the altar that we have considering a spiritual altar, uh, uh, offer is not, as I said, a planks and boards, but it, but it is not necessarily in front of the church. And we got one here. Thank God we got one. And I, I, I thank God that it's, it's for use. And you're invited to come every time we come into the church house. You're invited to come and to the altar for any reason of whatsoever. But we tonight, at last week tonight, we talked about what the altar was. And we didn't get through with that point totally, but I'm just going to hurry through these first few points here and get to where we stopped off last week tonight. But number one, we said that an altar is a place of full surrender. And we realized that Adam also, uh, uh, Abraham, I should say, uh, brought his son Isaac, and Abraham was in full surrender to God to present Isaac, his son, as a sacrifice. And I said this, and they commented about this, it wasn't really Isaac that God wanted, he wanted Abraham. Right. And I said this also, that we may have things in our life that God doesn't want, but he wants me and you. Amen. And certainly that's true, and in order to have a full surrender, uh, a full surrender, we have to do that, we have to give that. Then we mentioned that that full surrender is exhibited in our lives as we, as we uh, uh, fear the Lord. And, and we spoke of Abraham there where it says in uh, Genesis 22 and verse number 12, it says because Abraham feared the Lord. That doesn't mean that he was afraid. That means that he reverenced the Lord. And he reverenced God. And that's what we are to do as we fear God and walk by faith and not by sight. Then we see also our full surrender exhibit that we love God. And the Bible tells us we need to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, body, mind, soul, and strength. And we're encouraged to do that. Then I believe we show that also by serving God. What a thrill and what an honor it is to be a part of the Lord's work and to be busy in the Lord's work and to serve Him. And can I say there's a whole lot more to serving the Lord than just preaching? There's a whole lot more in serving the Lord than just being in church and coming to church. Amen. Oh, there's so many things today we should delight ourselves in the service that we do for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a blessing. It's a joy. And, you know, if I, if I wasn't serving the Lord today and wasn't living for Him and wasn't busy for Him, I don't know what I'd be doing. I, I just, I believe I'd be as lost as a ball in high weeds. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. And I thank the Lord that I've had the privilege of serving for over 50 years. Yeah. And let me just say, it's been worth every mile. Yeah. And the songwriter says this, he said, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Amen. Brother Dwayne, I wouldn't go back and trade anything I've Amen. given for the Lord Amen. in these last 50 something years. Amen. Thank God, thank God Amen. for the blessings that we have in serving him. And then also I believe that our surrender will show also as we walk worthy of God. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 12, it says that you would walk worthy of the Lord and have called you unto this, into his kingdom and glory. If there's anything that God expects us to do today, he expects us to walk worthy of him. And now none of us deserve the goodness of God and the grace of God, and none of us deserve the right to even be saved by the grace of God. But if we're saved, we need to walk worthy unto the Lord because He is worthy. Then I believe that if we walk, if we have that full surrender, that we will see exhibited also in that we do. <clears throat> excuse me. That we do all that we do, we do it to the glory of God. Verse uh, First Corinthians ten thirty one says. 
whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And can I say today, folks, we need to get all the praise and all the glory of everything we do. God will not share his glory with anyone. He is, he is the one that's worthy, and he deserves all the glory. Then I believe we exhibit that we exhibit that full surrender in our lives by us bearing the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. And not only bearing the cross, but also denying ourselves as we bear the cross. The Bible tells us that we need to take up the cross daily and follow Christ. And we are encouraged to do that. And we see how that we have to deny our own selves sometimes. The word deny just simply means to lose sight of oneself and one's own interests. You know, people today have, ha have their lives so filled up with things that they're interested in. There's nothing wrong with things that we're interested in. There's nothing wrong with having things. But when it becomes wrong is when we allow it to get between us and the Lord. Yeah. Get between us and God. Amen. So many times I've seen people come to the altar and they say, Preacher, I'm putting it all on the altar. I'm laying it down. Before they go back out to the church almost, they done picked it back up again. Right. Not too long ago, well, I mean, several months ago now, might have been a year ago now, way time flies, but we had a young man come to church and Suppose he was trying to get his life right, get his heart right, and, and, and uh, he's, he, he's, trying, he's trying to get rid of stuff out of his life, and he took his cigarettes, brought them down, laid them on the communion table right there. I don't think he's been back to church since. In the book of Joel, the Bible says that they rent their clothing and not their hearts. A lot of times, people like to put on a show. They like to go through the motions. They like to pretend and have a pretense. But I'm telling you, when God gets a hold of that heart, and God rends that heart, instead of you doing an outward show by renting your clothing, there'll be a difference. Amen. There will be a difference. And it's all what takes place here at this altar, or in another altar, wherever the Lord may deal with you and work in your heart and work in your life. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And the Bible says in Matthew 6, 20, But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven. That's what we should be interested in this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we that are saved by the grace of God, we should be interested in laying up treasures in heaven for the purpose of bringing honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What it will require, it will require that we get ourselves out of the way. Right. That's the problem. We got too much of ourselves in the way. And because of that, we're not able to lay it on the altar and put it on the altar and allow God to have our life wholly, totally, completely that we can serve Him. And then also, Think this, I think that we can also show uh, the full surrender in our lives also because that we live for Christ and live for Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse number 15 says, And that he died for all. Now listen, this is for ever, all of us. Not just for a chosen few, not just for a hand-picked crowd, but the Bible says that he died for all. That, were, that which, which would live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Amen. You see, folks, Jesus gave his life for us. Amen. I enjoy Easter. I enjoy, I enjoy every day. Amen. You realize this is the day that the Lord hath made? Amen. That we should uh, rejoice in it. And I, I know I preached this past Sunday on Sunday being a special day. And certainly it is, but this day is a special day also. And especially any time that we have given the privilege to come into the Lord's house to worship Him and have an opportunity to do business with Him. But He loves us so much and He gave His life on a cross called Calvary so that hell-deserving sinners can be saved by the grace of God. And folks, that's all we deserve is hell. Amen. We sing tonight, he saved religious people. He saved
save those that have, who's addicted to alcohol. You say, preacher, I, I just can't break the bonds of the things in my life that is sin that's holding me back and keeping me down. Let me say, I know you can't break it, but he can. The Lord can do it, and he can do it through you. The, tonight we sing, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And then Miss Clinton then played for the offertory hymn. They played there's power in the blood. And I believe it's still that way. Amen. There's not anything that anybody has ever done that God cannot forgive them of. Amen. Anything he can forgive them of their sins and wash them. And then I believe it will show as we give our lives totally and completely for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, many are not willing uh, to pay the price to have that separated life and that life where everything is laid upon the altar. The altar, there's altars in our life that are very important. I told you last Wednesday night that in the book of Genesis, there's several places throughout the book of Genesis where Abraham uh, built altars. He built altars on a number of occasions. And you know, if we were to think about it ourselves, there's probably been many altars that we have built also since we've been saved. It's not literally one that we constructed, but when God began to deal with our heart about something, for something, and through something, that we find ourselves in a, a better prayer. It could have been in anywhere. It could have been in the home. It could have been at work. It could have been in the car. It could have been, it could have been shopping. You know, it could be anywhere. And I believe any of those places that we take time out to do business with God can be an altar that will help us. And let me just say tonight, Christians, we all should have an altar. I thank God for the altar that I nailed in and got saved. Yes. You know what? It's lasting. I just got, I've just been saved one time. Yeah, right. That's all that's needed. Yeah. But you got to have that genuinely new birth and genuinely <laughs> be born again and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ to have just one time to be saved. Amen. Now I've heard people talk about it. Uh, that they had a profession, but they didn't have a possession. You see, that possession is what that we have possessed in our hearts and knowing beyond the shadow of that that we're saved by the grace of God and we're headed to heaven. Amen. I'm so glad. I, I know I say this, I say it a lot, but I sure am glad tonight that I'm not going to hell. Amen. And the reason I'm not going to hell is because I ask Christ to come into my heart and life and save me and forgive me of my sins. And you know what happened? That's exactly what he did. Amen. Have I been perfect the last 50 years? Absolutely not. But he sure has. Amen. He's been perfect. He's been more than enough. And I thank God for that. When we begin to think about the goodness and the graces of God and how that he's blessed us in so many ways as we lay our lives on the altar. But tonight, as I said, there may be some tonight that's never laid their life on the altar. You see, God doesn't require anything other than you just simply come with a broken heart. Yeah. And have repentance in your heart toward God for the things that you have done wrong. And listen, every one of us in this building have done wrong. But we serve a God, and there is a God that will forgive you and forgive me and forgive us and forgive anybody that comes. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. What a joy that is that we can know uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're saved by the grace of God. So we see that uh, we, we talked about what the altar is and we talked about uh, what the altar that we need to do and how we need to do it. And, and now, let me just say this. Why do we need to place, or what do we need to place on the altar? What do we need to place on the altar? Well, we've already talked about this. We need to place ourselves. We need to place ourselves. You say, well, preacher, what can, what can God get out of me? The same thing he got out of us for other rotten sinners. The same thing he gets out of everyone that comes to be saved by the grace of God and have give their heart and life to Christ. He, he, he makes trophies of grace out of us. And what a blessing that is that we can present ourselves. And the Bible tells us that in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1, a familiar passage of scripture where it says, 
uh, I, I, I beseech you by the mercy, by, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice. Now, Allah and these gods, uh, the Muslims, the God that they serve, they want to give their life for their God, but our God gave his life for us. Amen. Thank God. I, I, don't, I thank God I don't have to strap a bomb to my body right. and go out and set it off, not only take my life, but take the lives of other people. I don't have to do that to please my God. Amen. My God's pleased with a living sacrifice that we bring and that we lay on the altar. And can I say today, I've seen people get saved that I didn't ever think they would ever get saved, never. They were, they, they were bad to the bone. They were meaner than junkyard dog. I mean, they were, they, they were uncontrollable. And I've said this, and you probably said this too about some people. I've said this, I said, I don't believe God will ever save that person. And you know what? He did. <laughs> He did. It made a difference. Changed their life. Put them in church. Called some of them to preach. Called some of them to be Sunday school teachers. Called some of them to be deacons. Oh, wow. It's just amazing what God can do with those that are willing to give themselves unto the Lord. Yeah. The best decision I ever made was not the day I got married. The best decision I made one day was when I got born again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And then after I got born again, then, then the Lord sent me a good wife. And we got married. That's the best thing ever happened to her. <laughs> Amen? I mean, God is good to his young. Tell him. And when you think about all the good things that we got and since the time that we placed our heart and placed our lives and gave our hearts to Christ and laid our lives on the altar and said, God, here it is. Whatever you can use it for, you take it and use it. And that's what God wants us to do. Amen. And you would be surprised of what God can do for you. <laughs> so we see we need to give ourselves on the altar. Put ourselves on the altar. Another thing that we need to put on the altar, we put our homes on the altar. Yes. Our homes. You know, Joshua said, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A Christian home will honor Christ the Bible, and the church. Mom and Dad, you ought to have these kids. They're back now practicing in the classroom back there. They're back there singing and practicing. But you ought to thank God you have an opportunity to bring your kids and your grandkids to church. Amen. They need everything they can get in the Lord's house. You say, well, preacher, sometimes they don't want to come. Well, give them a drug problem. Yeah, drag them to church. And they say they had a drug problem. I got drugs in church. And that's what they need. Kids need to be in church. But now to think about it in homes now, the children tell the parents what they're going to do. Go bigger. Look where we at. Look what's happening. And I know we, talk, we, we, uh, uh, we, 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 we blame it on the fact that they took prayer out of schools. You know, that ain't no problem. The real problem is that we took prayer out of our homes. We took Bible reading out of our homes. We quit talking to our children about the Lord and don't do that anymore. It's been, been, been taken away. But we all upset because they took it out of school. They did take it out of school. It is bad. It's something we needed in school. And I think one that told me a while ago that uh, President Trump had signed the bill to put prayer back into school. That would be a blessing, wouldn't it? No, I'll tell you what would be a blessing. If they was to not impeach Donald Trump, which I don't think they're going to. I don't think they're going to. But I saw this. Nancy Pelosi said, if they did not go through and impeach Donald Trump, that she was going to resign immediately. I said, what? <laughs> Glory to God, baby, she'll go to China. That woman's wicked as hell and right. And uh, she, hey, I, I, believe, I believe she's just getting ready to resign. I really do. But it's sad to say, but that woman's wicked, though. She's totally against America. And a lot of those other folk up there are totally against America. 
And, 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 and at least I agree with our president when he said, let's make America great again. But the only way that America's ever going to be great again is for them to put God where he's supposed to be. Amen. In our government. In our legislature. In our Congress and all that. that that's where he needs to be. And that's, a, that's the only way it's going to be great again. And at least the Christians are getting a little bit of reprieve, a reprieve among, uh, amongst the administration that's serving now. Praying to God that it won't change. So we need to see that we need to put uh, ourselves on the altar. We need to put our homes on the altar. Or you're going to like this. I mentioned this last week. Did I stay here too long? I think we need to put our pocketbooks on the altar. The psalmist David said, What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? And then in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and verse number 10, the Bible says, Will men rob God? Yes, they will. You know, <clears throat> the Lord in the Bible, according to what's given in the Old Testament, is supposed to be 10%. The Bible says, As God hath prospered you on the first day of week, lay aside which that with that that God had prospered you with. Now, and we tithe off of that. We tithe off of, yeah, you say, preacher, should I tithe off of gross or should I tithe off of a net of my income? Well, I say it this way. Do you want a gross blessing or do you want a net blessing? Amen. 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 I've always... Tithe. We've always tithe off of our gross income. I believe the Bible says that he's to be first. That's before the your uh, taxes, federal taxes, your state taxes, your social security. I believe it ought to come off the top. That's just like when somebody walks up to me and asks me about how, he said, well, how am I dressed, preacher? Am I dressed all right? I said, you are you I said, you know the answer or you wouldn't ask the question. <laughs> and that's the way it is with tithing. If some people may, <laughs> well, praise the Lord, I like this part. If some people tithe, and their their tithe in the offering plate is what they make, you're that close to being in poverty. <laughs> you know what people are scared to tithe? They don't, they don't think God can do what he said he'd do. He said, if you don't believe me that I'll open up the windows and pour you out a blessing, you just try. Right. But people are afraid to try God. I remember some years ago, they, they, uh, a guy named Materno made these big earth-moving uh, tractor things. Uh, I don't know what they call them. Those big pans, Robert. What do they call them? Right. What? Right. Scraper. Well, that's simple enough. <laughs> a scraper. But it moves all the dirt. You see a grating work going on out somewhere. And the turnovers, when he, when he was uh, started that business, he was given 10% of what, on, the, the, on the money he made. And it got to the point that he was given, now listen to this, he was given 90% and he was keeping the 10%. He's a multi-millionaire. Do you know what he did? He tried God. And God met that need and God supplied the need and God done exactly what he said. God can do it if we'll just trust him. But we see, and the thing about it is, we won't lay ourselves on the altar. We won't lay our homes on the altar. We won't lay our pocketbooks on the altar. We won't lay our talents on the altar. We won't lay anything on the altar because we're so afraid of what God is going to do with it. I read in the paper today where there's a gentleman down here in Woodruff bought a lottery ticket, and it's worth $500,000. Everybody say, ooh, I'd like to do that. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to win anything in the lottery because I don't buy tickets. And not going to start buying tickets. 
you'd be surprised tonight of Christians, and I'm not necessarily saying in our church, but I'm talking about Christians in general. You'd be surprised tonight of people that are Christians that buy lottery tickets and don't tithe to the church. I guarantee you, there's some that's doing that. Anybody here doing that? <laughs> but I've never had a problem with giving to the Lord. Because he's always given back more. Amen. More than I could ever imagine. Amen. I've got more today than I thought I could ever accumulate. I remember when we got married, even before I got married, we was at home. I mean, we were lucky to get a Pepsi Cola. I mean, we, we was lucky to get a little Debbie cake. Of course, back then, little Debbie cake was this big. <laughs> now they are really little Debbie cake. <laughs> But we was lucky to get that. We was fortunate to get that. Why? Because we didn't have the money. Thank God for the change he made in me and us. And we began to do and follow the Lord and lay things on the altar for him. And he started blessing us. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift is from above. Can I tell you, your good and perfect gift is not out of the White House? No, it ain't out of the White House. <coughs> Now, there's a bunch of people looking for gimme, gimme, gimme. I'm Jimmy, and take all you gimme, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you right now, hey, it's not the government, but it comes from the hands of an almighty God. So we see that we need to place ourselves. We need to place our home. We need to place our pocketbook. We need to place our heart and our talents and everything else that we have in order that God can bless them and multiply. We see them progress for the grace of God. What happens? when we place all on the altar. I'm going to give you about three things here that will happen. Number one, the fire of the Lord comes down. Well, the Lord's been blessing here at the church. Several people have gotten saved over the last few months. Several people have joined the church in the last few months. We've had some good services on uh, during the last several months where the Lord just comes in and takes over and we have a good time of testimony and singing and, and, and thanking God for his goodness. It's just been a, just been a wonderful time. I thank God the fire's still burning, folks. Amen. The devil hadn't put it out. All we need to do is just fan it a little bit. Amen. Just fan it a little bit. Cause it to flare back up and, or get you an old spiritual poker. How many know what a poker is? You used to have a wood stove or a coal heater. That's what we need. We just need a, a, a spiritual poker. When everybody starts dying down and the flames get down, take this poke them spiritually and get them stirred up again. The Bible talks about that we need to stir up our gifts that's with us. Amen. Oh, God's given us so many things. He calls us to be blessed in so many ways that every now and then we ought to just stir it up. Let the sparks fly. Let them fall where they will. Maybe they'll jump, jump over somewhere else and catch a fire somewhere else. And what a blessing that would be. So we need, we see that the fire will come down if we'll just trust him. The Bible says in uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse number 38, the Bible says, then the, the, then the fire of the Lord fell. Well, wouldn't it be something if the fire of God would just fall in this place? Yes. There's a song, I think it's in our hymn book. It's entitled, O Lord, Send the Power Just Now. We sang that song, and if we believe that song, and if we ask for that, it would scare half of us to death if God really did send his power on the church and on the people. It should not be something that we're not familiar with. We should be familiar with it. We should expect it. We know that God will send it if we'll get to the place that we need to be. So I thank God for the fire that can burn and be kindled in our hearts. And a lot of times we use the phrase, we need... The revival fires kindled in our heart. And how true that is. I believe if we as Christians put our all on the altar and begin to have the fire of God to fall down, I believe it will cause sinners to be saved. So not only do I see what needs to be on the altar, but we see in what happens if we put it on the altar, we see that the fire of the Lord comes down. Number two, the song of the Lord begins. I'm thankful today and tonight that we can still have a song. Though the battle is raging, 
we can still have a song. I know we get sometimes despondent and sometimes we face defeat and disappointment and heartache. But let me just say tonight, folks, when that happens, don't dwell on what's taking place. Dwell on what God's already done. And like that song that Miss Norma sings for us sometimes, <clears throat> he can do it again yeah. and again and again. So thank God for the fact that we can have a song in our heart and sing unto the Lord. Listen, a, a person is down and outcast and discouraged and despondent. Uh, it's hard to get that person to sing. Brother Mike tells him in the choir, man, smile when you're singing. Some people say, I can't do two things at one time. I can't smile and sing at the same time. Well, sure you can. It's just according to what you're thinking about. It's according to what your heart's on. It's according to what your mind's thinking on. Oh, when we think of the goodness of God, we should always have a smile and we should always have a soul. And then the third thing is this. And boy, how true this is. The power of God will be restored in our lives. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, verse number 31, it says that when they prayed, the place where they prayed was shaken. I believe God can still shake the places. That's right. I believe God can still break the heart of sinners. Amen. I believe God can still work in the hearts and lives of Christians to cause them to sell completely out to him and put those things in their life on the altar. Amen. I believe God can still save those that come. God is still saving. God is still calling. Not many are coming. Not many are answering. But God can still save and will save. He can save to the uttermost. Amen. And the Bible tells us that word uttermost just simply means that he can completely save us. I didn't get a half a dose when I got saved. I got a dose when I got saved. I believe I got a double dose. Every now and then, I feel like I got a double dose. One of the greatest things ever happened to me the day I gave my life to Jesus. And I believe every person in this building tonight that's been saved by the grace of God, you would say the same thing. Amen. And I believe every sinner that gives their heart and life to Christ will say the same thing. Amen. There's a song entitled, There's Room at the Cross for You. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross. You know, all of us have friends and family that are not saved. And I know that you pray for them. I thank God that somebody prayed for me. Yes. And they're concerned about where their loved ones and their family and their friends, they're concerned where that loved one, that person, is going to spend eternity. They definitely don't want to spend eternity in hell. You say hell is a lousy place. Lousy place. Hell is a loud place. You say, right, preacher, when I go to hell, I go there to hell with all my friends and all my buddies, and we're just going to party in hell. There ain't going to be no party there. It's going to be loud, but the loud is going to be the weeping, the crying, and the gnashing of teeth, where people are tormented day and night forever and forever and forever. You say, preacher, I don't believe that. I'm telling you, it's in the Word of God. And that's the way it's going to be for the unsaved. It's going to be a, not only a lousy place and a loud place, it's going to be a lonely place. You say, how do you know that, preacher? I'll be there with my friends and my buddies. I know. The Bible says that you'll be cast into outer darkness. It's going to be a lonely place. You see, <clears throat> It's a place where those who fail to accept Jesus Christ go. And God does not send that person to hell. They go there on their own choosing. God created us as free moral agents. Either we decide, decide that we want to be saved and go to heaven, or we decide that we don't want to accept Christ and go to hell. It's our decision. I'm glad I thank God I made the right decision. Amen. Amen. 
I hope tonight that you're going to heaven. I hope tonight that you've been saved. If you're not, we're going to give an invitation. And if you need to get saved tonight, you can come. Someone will take the word of God and show you how you can be wonderfully and gloriously saved. And have assurance of heaven being your home. Let's stand if you would, please. I may have stubborn and stammered a little bit tonight, but there's so many things the Lord laid upon your heart to try to get out and say. But I hope something was said tonight that touched somebody's heart to see it. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, if you're here tonight and you say, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I, if I die right now, I'm not sure I go to heaven. I'm going to raise my hand and ask you to pray for me. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to come to you now or back to the service. But we'll just simply pray for you. If you have raised your hand and say, Preacher, I sure need to be saved. And pray for me. What anywhere? What anywhere? What anywhere? God bless you. Is there some here tonight that say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. No, I'm on my way to heaven. But Preacher, I'm honest. I hadn't laid it all on the altar for God. I'm, I'm I'm guilty. I'm not, I haven't done that. If you like that this, this evening, would you raise your hands and say, pray for me, preacher. God bless you. God bless you. Hands up all over the building. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You can put your hand down. This moment, while we wait for just a moment, if you raise your hand, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to come to you after church. I'm not going to come to you now. But if God dealt with your heart about being saved, would you slip out right now and come on down and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Christian, if you're here and you're all not on the altar, would you come? One's already come, but is there any others that would come tonight and say, Preacher, I want to put it all on the altar for God. I just want to put it all there for Him. But the most important thing tonight is this. You see, those that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, you may not never have another chance to get saved. This might be the last change. This might be the last opportunity. And while this one's been dealt with at the altar, if you need to come, would you slip out and come? Say, Preacher, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can live it. Well, I know you can, but God can live it through you. He'll help you. If you'll just give your life to Him. What is, anywhere it needs to come. We're not going to linger. This one gets through being dealt with at the altar. We're going to be going home, but you still have a chance to come. appreciate you being here tonight. It's been a real blessing. Pray for those that raised their hand tonight. That God would work in their heart and their life and they'd step out for Christ and those that raised their hand for salvation they'll get saved. And those that raised their hand said they need to put things on the altar. Let's pray for them also. Be sure to remember all the requests of our sick folk, church members. The Lord bless them and help them to take care of them, help them to get back and get well. And I pray the Lord watch over and give you a safe trip back home. Don't forget Sunday morning. Sunday school starts at 9.30. We'd love to have all of you for Sunday school. Worship service at 10.30. Please try to come back and be with us. We'd love to have you. Let's bow our heads and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. And you'll be safe going home. May the Lord take care of you. And I'm going to ask Brother Herschel, especially if he would get dismissed.